Welcome everybody to the Unimog 404 painting video. Now this is a Bob Mac 3D model from our West German STL file Kickstarter. So please check that out. I put a link down in the description and otherwise we'll get to it. The Unimog is a really neat little vehicle. Right? It is kind of a light truck used through the West German army all through the Cold War period. It's fairly easy to paint. It's fairly easy to print. It's a neat little vehicle. And of course, it really enhances your tabletop and your game to have trucks like these. Now, to paint this up, I'm going to go through several stages. And the first one is to prime it black. I'm going to do black because ultimately, I'm going to paint this vehicle in that West German gray, green color. And it's super fast to be able to prime it in black, paint it with the base co uh, color, but not cover absolutely everything. So I will leave a lot of dark areas to give a lot of contrast. I'm then going to go in and highlight that green color. So I'll have the black base, the base color, and then a highlight on top of it. That should give me enough dynamic range to bring some interest into the model, but on the other hand, do it very quickly. After that, I'm going to paint the tarp. So the top of the vehicle has a tarp to it, the back has a tarp, and I'm going to do that in a contrasting color. I don't want this to be an olive drabby color. I don't want it to match the base paint. I want it to stand out. So I've picked a kind of a tan color. Now, in this case, I'm using a, a uh, different kind of paint that I am not used to. I'm going to use one of the AK Real Color uh, paints that's an enamel paint. I usually use acrylics. I usually use um, Vallejo paints, maybe some ammo of MIG, but this time I'm going to try to do an enamel paint just to see how it flows out of the airbrush and how easy it is to use. All right, well then, let's get to it. Okay, we're gonna start off painting the base color. Now, I've already primed the model in black and didn't choose to show you that because it's pretty simple and straightforward. But the color I'm gonna use is a Vallejo Yellow Olive. It is a great color for the West German Army, that gray-green color. I'm going to mix it up with some thinner, and I'm just going to apply it straight. I'm not going to add any darkening or other colors to it. I'm just going to apply it straight. My goal here is to cover majority of the core of the model in this color, but I'm going to leave a lot of dark areas in the cracks and crevices so that you get a sense of depth to the model. Well, the next stage I decided to do the tarp instead of the highlight. When I was painting the base color, I noticed that there's a lot of, let's say, a tight space between the tarp and the back of the truck. And I thought that I could clean that up, any overspray, with the highlight of the green color. So I was going to switch to do the tarp here. So for the tarp, I did choose that enamel color from AK. It's a brownish, greenish, weird color, but I liked it and I thought I would give it a shot. Um, when you use enamels, you have to use a different thinner, an enamel thinner, and so this is my first time trying it and I just threw it in the airbrush, put a bunch of thinner in there, and started spraying. I really liked how the enamel lasted in the airbrush. Typically, with acrylic paints, they dry fairly quickly, so you have to paint quickly so that it flows evenly, but with the enamel, it seemed to last a little longer. It didn't dry as quick in the airbrush, on the tip of the airbrush, and so I could get a little bit better spray with it. I don't know if that means that I'm gonna switch to acrylics or enamels all the time, but it was certainly an enjoyable experience. So here I am spraying the, um, the model, the tarp, the top of the, the tarp, and then the back. Again, I'm going to use the same philosophy I did with the 
core body. I'm going to try to leave a lot of the black, especially in the recesses of the tarp. I want to show off the tarp texture, right? What, what's brilliant about this is Bob did a great job of sculpting the tarp that that sits over the cab and on the back of the truck and it has a lot of texture to it or tightness or folds or whatever you want to call them and I really wanted to highlight those out. So here I'm focusing on the top of those particular folds leaving the dark black below it but not 100% right. I'm putting some paint over it so it gives you that idea of it being a tan color but a darker tan color. Okay, as you can see here, I thought that the tarp area came out really nice. That enamel paint was really nice to work with, and it allowed me to get into the detail and hit the tops of the tarp and really get some contrast into that tarp. Hopefully you can see that and this brings that out, but I was really happy with it. Now I'm going to do the highlighting of the green color to the base and clean up a little bit around where there was a teeny bit of overspray for the tarp. And I'm just gonna take that base uh, Vallejo yellow olive color, add a little white to it, mix it up right in the airbrush, and go hit my highlights. This is focused on wherever I think that the sun would hit the vehicle, right? This is the engine deck hood. This is the high sides on the on the sides, the, the, the upper, portions, maybe in the middle of the door, just anywhere where I think a little more contrast is needed. The vehicle is pretty small, so this is pretty quick. The next thing to do in my process is details. And the Unimog doesn't have a ton of details, but if you watched any of my other videos, you, you know that I'm a big fan of picking out details so that there is some diversity to the model. Uh, the biggest, I would say, the item on the model that's not the base color or the tarp is the tires. The tires are one thing you're really gonna notice on this vehicle because it makes it stand out. It's, they're very large, and so I wanna make sure the tires look good. So I'm gonna do that by painting it a rubber color. I really like this rubber color. It is a um, ammo of MIG color called rubber. It's a off black gray weird color that I really think that at the end of the day comes off looking nice. So I'm gonna paint those tires by hand with that particular color. I'll come back and airbrush it a little bit to blend that color, but, but Right now, that rubber color is what I'm going to do next. Then I'm going to pick out the ropes on the back of the tarp. So where the tarp hits the tailgate, I'm going to, there are a bunch of ropes there. I'm going to pick those out in a different color, contrasting color from the tarp and the body so that you can see those. Besides that, there's just a few details here and there, windshield wipers and headlights and things like that. So hitting those details is nice. Otherwise, it's a fairly quick step to do. Now, after doing the details, it's time for the pin wash. I've already covered this model in a gloss varnish. I didn't show you that because, again, it's kind of redundant just to show me spraying the model. But I covered it with a gloss varnish to protect it. And now I'm going to do the pin wash. I'm going to do a little bit different of a pin wash than I traditionally do. I usually grab a product by Ammo of MIG, which is an enamel that works really nice. But I've been watching some other videos, and they use a oil paint, and they make up a pin wash. So I'm going to do that. And I'm using the shadow color from Ablung 502. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but it's an oil. And with the oil, you can mix up the pin wash by simply using some thinner to it. And you have to basically make your own pin wash instead of it being, you know, 
pre-mixed for you. I thought this would be neat to try, a perfect model to try it on. And so I mixed some up, put some in my um, palette, added some thinner to it, and did the pin wash. And actually, it came out really nice. I like the oils for pin wash. I don't know if I'd use it 100% of the time, but I certainly will definitely use it again. The next step in the process is cleaning up the pin wash. And I forgot to videotape that. But essentially, you go back and anywhere you have too much wash, you clean it up. You put a little thinner on your brush, you clean up, you make sure that your brush is only damp, not wet. And you can simply wipe off any of the wash that got into a place that you didn't want. It's pretty quick, easy, especially on a small model. This is a great model to practice on because it's small. Um, and now after I do that, after I do that pin wash, I let it dry, I've cleaned it up. The only thing left really to do is do a matte finish. I like my vehicles to knock down all the gloss. I don't want any of the shininess to it. So I put a matte finish on it and, and I'm a big fan of the Ammo of MIG. Um, ultra matte varnish spray and I just coat my vehicle in it it's going to protect it too unlike normal models that people display on their shelves I game with mine and so it gets a lot of handling and it gets a lot of putting in storage and taking out of storage and so I, I like to protect it so I put a fairly heavy coat might do two coats on it so that it won't chip or rub or have any problems well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and remember that this particular model is available in the Bob Mac 3D West German Kickstarter. Again, the link's down below. And thank you very much.